Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the SSF progress of the Righteous Fire Juggernaut. Now, uh, I did do things slightly different on this character than the initial POB, and I will go ahead and explain. <clears throat> but for now, I wanted to go ahead and jump into a quick map. And after we do a quick map, I'm just going to kind of show you what I've been doing on the character. Uh, less armor, less block. That's actually kind of spooky. All right, so we are up to tier 10. Or sorry, not tier 10. Ooh. Uh, we're up to tier 6 maps. We're level 80 on the character. I have been progressing a bit slower than usual, which I feel is actually totally fine for you guys on YouTube because it's easier to keep up with what I'm doing versus, you know, the next day being here and then all of a sudden we're... You know, God knows where. <laughs> where, sorry. I cannot do this. So far, I'm pretty happy with the character. Uh, one of the changes I did this go around is uh, actually went unbreakable in Merc Lab, and I'm completely skipping unyielding and went for unstoppable. Now, a lot of this really just comes down to preference. I would not say there is a directly better approach. Um, the only thing I could really think of is that the unbreakable setup in Merc Lab will make you a lot more tanky in maps. You will progress a little slower because of unyielding, but I'll be honest, like, I the, the character feels really good right now. I don't really feel like I need this damage anyway. I think it's mainly going to be red maps where it's going to pick up, but it's fine. I'm pretty happy with how the character is. Uh, so far, we are still deathless. I'm sure that's going to change at some point because I play a bit reckless, but things are pretty smooth on the character for now. I think the only thing that I have really done that might look a little strange right now is uh, I'm not running Skitterbot because I, I really don't actually know why. I have to just get a few more levels, I think, but I'm pretty sure I could run Skitterbot on my MP pool right now, but I'm being dumb and I'm putting Vitality on my MP pool and I'm just using a level one Clarity Arrogance right now to trigger the Mastery or one max res. I'm, I'm gonna drop this very, very soon. It's just, I guess you could say, because of like my colors and stuff, I didn't really want to reserve like 500 life right now. Um, even though with Unbreakable, I feel really tanky, so I just need to kind of do that. A lot of people also ask about clearing, so I figured, you know, it would help to show you guys an example of what I do for clear. In the early stages of character progression like this, I personally find that you don't even really need to throw that many fire traps. Actually, I know that's kind of redundant because the, the further on you go, the less fire traps you need to throw. But the point I'm trying to make is like, uh, instead of throwing a fire trap at every target, you can just flammability. It's faster than throwing a fire trap. Scales with the uh, cast speed you get from frenzy charges. And uh, I don't know, it just feels cleaner. And then for the really tanky targets, that's when I throw fire traps like these guys, right? Actually, there's so much loot here. I thought that was a mage blood right there. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, character is feeling pretty solid. Uh, I'm above 20,000 armor. It's just that this is a reduced armor map. Um, if this was a red map, I'd probably re-roll it since my gear is really bad, but I'm not really in red maps right now. Um, I guess you could say in the early stages of PoE, this is what I think tricks a lot of new players is the way map modifiers kind of scale. When you're in white tier maps, the modifiers are not that punishing, so you can run a lot of them. And then when you push into like red tier maps and even some late tier yellow maps, it can get a lot more scary. The map mods you used to run like 20% less recovery turn into 60% less recovery, which there is a very big difference between those. Is this double boss? Oh, it is. Cool. I have this weird thing where I love doing ritual early on in the league, in any league. Actually, in SSF in general, I do like ritual. I don't spec it on the tree, but I like running it because of early potential five links, uh, corrupted jewels for like corrupted blood immunity, and just like very rare and niche drops, I guess you could say. I, I feel that it's it's really worth it in SSF. Where the other rituals go? There we go. Yeah, so after this map, we're going to go back, and uh, I'll talk about my gear. I'll talk about where I want to go with my gear, and then I'll talk about the Atlas. Uh, and then I guess just for DPS checks, I'm currently 85k with my Frenzy Charges. 
And on my fire trap, we are rocking 126k. Every time, man. Ritual, I don't know what it is. It's just like the early ritual on account progression. For some reason, I really wish I could pinpoint the, the answer. We could just call it streamer RNG. It just really seems to pay out. All right, YouTube, you are my witness, okay? When I go live and people on stream ask me where the second divine came from, you let them know. Yeah, we got a, we actually got a divine drop in Act Five. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the gear. All right, I got spooned a weapon. I was in white tier maps and I identified a plus one spell skill with dot multi. So what I'm doing now is waiting till I unveil fire multi and I'm gonna craft fire multi as my third suffix. And then maybe try to exalt for, I don't know, fire damage or something. I, I'm not really sure. The weapon I was using before this is uh, this weapon here. This weapon is 17% uh, fire multi with fire damage. But on the skill tree, it actually had fire exposure. And fire exposure is not bad to get, especially when I'm not, I don't like using wave of conviction. And uh, I don't have eldritch currency yet, right? It's very early on. This weapon is pretty shit. Um, this doesn't do anything for me. I'm probably going to try to maybe merge a different one onto this weapon because this is a pretty good weapon. It's Again, it's got 12 multi, but when I craft fire multi, it's going to basically be plus one 30 multi, 30% 30 increase. But plus one spell skill is just better than plus one fire because it affects things like your determination and your malevolence, right? So over here, we've got flammability with life tap. Um, just a standard setup with my purity of elements. I'm actually kind of getting ready to drop purity of elements. My res is actually incredible right now. Like if I turn it off, it's just shy, but a lot of my gear is not super good yet. Uh, helmet. Helmet, uh, I got increased life regenerate. This is a rare, it's definitely more rare than flat regen. I feel I could be wrong here, but life regenerate scales extremely well on righteous fire builds. So I do try to prioritize this. You can typically get, typically get this on helmet, glove and boot, but Boots are going to be Legacy of Fury later, um, so usually just between these two. And on your helmet, you're usually using an Elder Helm, so the chances of you getting regen rate, you know, drastically goes down. So then you typically pivot to your gloves. Over here, I've got Faster Attacks, Frost Blink, Life Tap, Shield Charge. Remember, you want a level 1 Frost Blink so you don't die to Ellie Reflect. Over here, I have a uh, plus 1 Fire, item level 3 uh, Shield. So one thing that a lot of people forget is um, item levels on equipment. It doesn't matter whether I'm playing SSF or Trade League, item level is always something that pops up all the time. People always want to know what item level to craft on. People don't want to spend currency on, you know, anything that's not essentially the best. And there is nothing wrong with that. However, let me, let me pull something up for you guys to help show you an example of some stuff here. All right, so this is uh, Huey DB. Huey database. Uh, I basically have modifiers bookmarked. So when I click this, it literally just goes to modifiers. So from here, I just click the offhand uh, shields, right int. So if I go over here to look at plus level of gems, we all know how plus level of gems work, right? Uh, as a caster, your gems are, as anyone, your gems are capped at 20. Casters scale heavily off of gem level. So going from level 20 to 21 is huge for caster builds. That's just how they scale. Attack builds are typically uh, scaled by their weapon. Caster builds are scaled by their gem, plus the sum of all their increases and multipliers, etc., right? It is an item level 2 requirement to get plus 1 fire gem. So what does that mean? Well, that, that means that, say you kill uh, Hillock on Twilight Strand, he drops item level 3 gear. Because the gear is so low item level, there are very few modifiers that can roll. Why? Because nothing else can roll. For example, all res requires item level 12. Uh, mana regen requires 2, but that's only one roll. Uh, let's see what else is there. Like chance to block, you can't get that. Avoid ailments, you can't get that. Faster start, you can't get that. Maximum res, can't get any of these maximum res. Uh, hybrid, you can get this. Uh, what else? But you get the point, right? So if you actually just pick up like an item level 3 shield and alt roll it or fossil craft it, you probably won't have fossils in SSF, but if you alt roll it, there is a very high chance you get it within like 50 alterations, right? By the time you get to maps and you've done a few maps, that's not a problem. Uh, and then I just got like 15 life and lock. N nothing crazy, but essentially what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to regal. 
and then I'm just going to craft either a resistance or I'm going to craft life. And it's good to go, honestly, until I get uh, like a proper shield. Okay. Um, amulet. My amulet essentially is a int amulet with dexterity because those are the two big stats I want on jug, right? Int and dex. So I've got percent armor on it with uh, fire damage. Nothing really too crazy. Um, amethyst ring. Amethyst ring because I'm trying to get my chaos resistance up right now. So it's just an amethyst ring with life, dex, and cold res. Um, body armor is pretty boop. Uh, remember, you do want to try to use a heavy armor body armor for your unbreakable. This is just currently what I have with limited currency. Um, nothing crazy. This is where my LE focus, efficacy, burning damage, righteous fire is. Uh, other two-tone ring over here actually has a suffix open for another res, so I will probably craft hybrid chaos on this. That'll pull my chaos out of negative. Uh, gloves. So these gloves were actually unveiled. A lot of people get confused on the betrayal mechanic of unveiling. Quite literally, the gloves dropped. I picked them up. I unveiled them. It hit plus two AOE gems. Even though these stats are garbage, this is kind of like a pseudo five link. This is as if I'm using an Empower 3 right now because it gives plus two level with an AOE node. You can see the hybrid there. It gives 9% AOE. So right here is where my fire trap is. Now, normally I would put my RF here, but because it is a, a armor armor evasion piece, it's unlikely I get the right colors, and I don't want to spend that much of my currency this early into the gearing, so I just put fire trap there, and it's fine. And I've got fire trap with combustion, life tap, uh, trap in mind. You can see the fire trap is level 23. It's 19, but it gets plus two um, from global modifier, which is plus one from the shield, plus one from the weapon, and then it gets plus two from the gloves themselves, so it shoots up to 23, right? Uh, belt is just pretty much life res armor. Um, I'm going to switch the fire and lightning res craft here to fire and chaos or something in chaos. So I'm going to get like, you know, 14 chaos res here, 14 chaos res here. Um, these boots have cold res. I'm just going to switch them to cold and chaos when I get the chaos craft. And then I might even craft chaos res here. And we probably will be at like close to 40% chaos resistance. So that 40% chaos resistance plus our Akali um, should pretty much chaos cap us against chaos damage over time, and that's before we even hit red map, so very excited about that. The reason why I'm using Arakali is because I am using um, Unstoppable. There is a lot of flexibility when it comes to your Ascendancy choice, or your Pantheon choice with this build. Uh, you can run Brine King for Freeze Immune after you drop Purity of Elements. However, if you are in the Unstoppable variant, you don't need the Freeze Immune because you are unaffected by Freeze, so that means you can pivot into our Akali for reduced damage taken from over time and the Chaos Res. Also, the debuffs expire faster is pretty nice. Um, furthermore, you can also use like Soul of Lunaris because when you're mapping, you're always surrounded. You take reduced Ellie damage if you've been hit recently. As a Jug, we get hit a lot. So there's a lot of flexibility here. And I just realized I never selected my Rolakesh. All right, perfect. So as for my tree right now, you can kind of see it's very similar to the POB. Uh, I just don't have Unwavering right now because we are in the Unstoppable variant, and I don't want to drop Call to Arms yet. I, I, I'm i just not, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? My gear is not really up there yet, so I can't drop this yet. Maybe in like, I don't know, 10 more levels, 15 more levels, we'll drop it once our gems hit 2020 and clearing feels good, or maybe to Legacy. So right now, I am pathing upward towards here to grab a Heart of Flame, Breath of Flame, and I believe Cruel Preparation and deep thoughts so we can set up our proper auras because getting malevolence would be huge. As for our Atlas tree, uh, it's a little weird right now. So I really want a minimum frenzy ring with betrayal. So I'm actually gung-hoing all into betrayal. So I'm gonna grab uh, covert stakeouts right over here. Now, another thing is even though my tree looks weird, getting these little baby adjacent nodes are actually totally fine because they're basically just increasing your map drops. And there's no harm in getting extra map drops. So after I take covert stakeouts, I'm probably going to push my, uh, I'm probably going to go up and maybe go into expedition. I don't think I want to farm expedition in white maps, but I'm definitely capable of doing yellow maps. So expedition and yellow maps, I think is pretty good. And then I think I might actually branch out into harvest uh, for some future crafting, which we'll talk about in the next video. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv box. Hope you guys are having an awesome league. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.